everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and you know how much I love low-cost PCs, and we've got another one to check out. This is the Nextbook Flex 11. This is a brand new one that is available at Walmart uh, for $227. It is an 11.6-inch uh, tablet computer. You can actually take the screen off of here and use it uh, as a tablet, and it does actually feel and operate pretty nicely for the price with a few little gotchas here and there, which we'll point out uh, in a few minutes. It's got an 11.6-inch IPS display, so it's got very nice viewing angles on it. Uh, the bleed-through isn't bad at all. I was really uh, surprised to see that I'm not seeing much of it at all uh, on the screen. Bleed through is when you see a little bit of the backlight kind of creeping through uh, the sides of the screen and it really doesn't look that bad. Uh, this is a 1366 by 768 display so it is uh, a little bit uh, lower resolution than full HD but on a screen this size it does look uh, really nice and the resolution is looking very nice on it too. So I'm really uh, impressed with just how it looks and how it uh, really performs too and we'll get to some of that performance in a minute. Now this is similar to the other next book that we looked at a few months ago which costs less uh, but it has better specifications. So they both have the same processor. It's got that Atom Bay Trail processor that a lot of these uh, inexpensive Windows machines have. Uh, it goes up to 1.8 gigahertz. It's a quad core chip, uh, but it has also two gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. So what that means is that you can put more software on here and also run more things at once without it slowing down. So two gigabytes on a Windows machine isn't all that great, uh, but it's certainly a lot better than the one gig that we saw with the other next book. So they've made um, some improvements there. Uh, the keyboard is pretty nice. The keys are a little bit small for me, but uh, not as small as uh, the Asus T100 that I would compare this with. So it actually, I've reviewed that too, so you can check that out. So it isn't too bad to type on. There's some uh, little oddities like the shift key here next to the arrow key that's hard to find. Now the keyboard does have a light on it, but it is not a backlit keyboard. It lights up around the keys. Uh, so you'll have to kind of look at the reflections to see what key you're trying to hit. Uh, so this is what it looks like in a darkened room. Uh, and if you're in a completely black room, you're probably just going to see more of the outline of the keys and the, and the light and not necessarily the key you're trying to hit. So this is really not a backlit keyboard. The trackpad, though, is a little odd to me because there's actually two buttons under here. So a lot of these click pads have a single button and it detects where your finger is on the pad to figure out if you're uh, right clicking or left clicking. This one actually has two different buttons. So if you hit uh, the mouse in the middle of the uh, the screen here, it gets confused as to which one you're actually pushing. And you can actually hear two distinct clicks uh, as you do it. Uh, the other issue I found is that when I move the uh, computer around, like if I pick it up by the keyboard or maybe pick it up by the monitor, it continually loses connection with the keyboard. So they're very uh, much attached here. I can't pull the screen off, but uh, the connection between the keyboard and uh, screen keeps going in and out whenever I'm picking up the computer and moving it around. So I think that's something that uh, you'll want to keep in mind. You want to keep it flat on a, on a desk. There's a couple of little build issues here that uh, you run into with these low cost PCs because, you know, for various reasons, that's why they cost the way they do. And this is one of those reasons. But uh, overall, though, the build quality feels very nice. It's very sturdy, uh, very heavy, actually. This is three pounds, but it feels heavier than that. Um, and I think it's just because of the uh, how the weight's distributed and everything. But it is pretty hefty feeling, but it actually gives it a sense of uh, some sturdiness also, which is actually not such a bad thing. Uh, you do have some ports on here that are worth noting. You've got a headphone jack here. I tested it out. I didn't hear any noise on it, so it does sound very clean to me, so that was a good thing. Uh, there's a little tiny port here for its internal microphone, which you can't see too well. Uh, you plug your power in here. Uh, there is a USB port here, but you're going to need one of those uh, OTG cables in order to make that work. They're about $2. It's about anywhere I find them on Amazon and other sites, 2 or $3. And what those do is convert that little tiny USB plug uh, into one that might be on the peripheral that you will be connecting. It has micro HDMI for connecting to a uh, external display, and that is uh, something you can do, but you'll have to turn off the internal display if you want to get it up to the full 1080. So it can't drive uh, HD on one display and still drive the internal display. And that's been a feature that, or an issue that's uh, with all of these Bay Trail. Uh, base devices there. And there's also a micro SD card slot here. So if you uh, want to go beyond the 64 gigabytes of storage, you can pop in a, a micro SD card there and get that. And then on the keyboard dock, they have a USB 2.0 port, a regular USB port. So you can plug in uh, peripherals into the keyboard dock, which will then uh, work up with the, uh, the tablet overall. And you have another USB port on this side, although you want to be careful, especially if you're connecting hard drives, that uh, if that connection is really loose between the keyboard uh, and the screen, when uh, that uh, issue that I I've been talking about here gets you know happens uh, you might uh, lose some uh, connectivity with that drive which can be very very dangerous for your data so I think you want to be careful about that and it could just be that this one is just got a little flakiness to it that uh, you might not have on yours so that is the overall hardware let's take a look now and see how it performs all right we'll pull up uh, Internet Explorer here and do some web browsing tests first so we've got the New York Times already
already loaded here. We're running a little ad in the uh, process. It seems to be uh, keeping up with everything just fine there. We'll maybe uh, click on a story here and see how that loads up and it will then come up. The screen actually looks very nice, again, because it's got that IPS display. It looks a little bit nicer than some other cheap machines might. Uh, it is, though, very wide, so you've got this 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and when you, uh, you know, looking at it like this, it's probably fine, but if you want to read it, you know, in the tabloid format, it is a little bit narrow on the sides, which might uh, make it less than, less desirable as a reading platform, just because things get pretty uh, narrow here when you have it in this orientation. So that's my only issue with these 16 by 9 screens, but this is typically what we see at this price point. I think just because these panels are uh, cheaper to get at than uh, some of the ones with a better aspect ratio for reading. But the text looks good. Uh, it's very clear. As you can see, videos pop up. Of course, the ads too pop up very quickly. You got to pay the bills somehow. And the Octane Benchmark Test, which we run on all of our low-end devices here in the studio, it seems to uh, back up what we just saw. I got a very respectable score of 6,639, and that's measuring its ability to process JavaScript as well as render web pages, the kinds of things that uh, these computers will do on the web. And it really is uh, doing much better than some other low-end devices running with the same processor. So this is going to be a very good uh, web browsing experience as we just saw. All right, now I'm going to reattach everything here because it's gonna be easier to navigate YouTube with it, but I did wanna show you the YouTube performance. I do recommend running YouTube on the Internet Explorer browser over Chrome just because it seems to perform better, uh, especially with video. Now what I'm gonna do now is play a 1080p 60 video. And as you can see here, we'll go full screen with it. Uh, it's running just fine. I'm seeing pretty much the full frame rate here, so no bogging down or delays with that speed video. Uh, if we were watching on Chrome, it would be a different story, but uh, here it runs very nicely. Now I am recording this video at 30 frames per second, so that might be why it doesn't look as smooth as it would be otherwise, uh, but uh, it is able to play back 1080p 60 without issue. Of course, it is going to be down converting that video essentially to uh, the size of the screen, which is 1366 by 768, but it's able to do that and provide the full frame rate. All right, now it's time to get some work done. We're gonna load up our uh, Microsoft Word 2010. I like to run the older version just because it doesn't do all this funky text animation. And we're going to see how uh, it runs with our newsletter template that we typically run on here. So you can see it comes up relatively quickly. It is a little slow to render as we're scrolling down just because this is not a very high-end machine. This is about where I've seen other similar devices uh, perform with this kind of task. But again, just like on uh, the other uh, tests that we just ran, the screen looks very nice to look at. So from the standpoint of uh, looking at all the text that will do very nicely and it will do all the things that uh, you would want to do in Word just going to do them a little bit slower but if you're just typing out regular boring documents or something uh, it'll be fine it'll just be a little bit slower when you're doing tasks like this. Now one thing that people ask me all the time is how well do games run on these devices and the one I like to show uh, most often is Minecraft just because I think it's a uh, pretty popular game that doesn't have very steep hardware requirements and as you can see we're getting anywhere from like 30 down to the high teens on the frames per second here and you know it's certainly playable by, by my eyes although you know others might disagree if they're very serious Minecraft players but for 200 and something dollars you can uh, get yourself running the full version of Minecraft not the mobile edition uh, and pr pretty much be able to do a lot with it without having to spend a lot on the hardware. And as you can see here, we're seeing you know some pretty good frame rates now as we're moving along and things are loading up. So when you get into like more of the high detail areas, uh, you'll start to see some slowdown. And just for gaming overall, uh, my rule of thumb is that anything like eight to 10 years old or older uh, will run very well on here, typically with not a lot of settings changes to be done. So the, the chips have really gotten to the point where you know for $200 and change, you can get a computer that's probably about as fast as something that uh, you might have used back in that period of time like eight to ten years ago uh, newer stuff if you know minecraft is newer uh, and it's designed to be you know sold to a broader audience which is why it runs well on here but the newer games that are designed for high-end gaming pcs and uh, those kinds of uh, hardware are not going to perform very well on here just because this is not aimed at that market so i think if you're realistic about it uh, you should be in pretty good shape and i think you know things like emulation and uh, you know other uh, older games especially like the old dos games and stuff that you might get from uh, GOG, which is a great website for that kind of stuff, uh, will run very nicely on here and be very capable. Again, it's just the really new AAA titles that are not going to perform on here. Battery life is actually better than I thought it was going to be. I'm getting about anywhere from 8 to 10 hours doing the basic kinds of stuff you would do with a computer like this. So web browsing, uh, the Microsoft Word stuff, email. Uh, so I was very pleased with the battery life on here. Uh, the one thing that I wasn't too pleased about, though, was the warranty. So they do warranty the hardware 
for a year, but not the labor. So it's a parts and labor kind of thing. Uh, so the parts are a year, the labor is 90 days. So if anything happens after the end of 90 days, they will charge you labor uh, for any kind of repairs that need to be done, uh, irrespective of whether or not you caused the damage or if it's just a, a manufacturing defect. Uh, so what I would suggest is if you're looking at this, uh, maybe put it on a credit card that gives you an automatic extended warranty. You could, of course, buy that from, from Walmart for another $40, but uh, many credit cards offer that as a service, and I would suggest maybe doing that uh, just to protect yourself in case something happens uh, within the first 90 days. You know, these computers really aren't, especially at this price point, are typically, you know, the year warranty is about uh, where I would expect them to last just because, you know, they're, they're not made with, you know, really expensive components and they tend to wear out and break down over time, especially as you're, you know, moving the screen off and on the keyboard and everything else. But I've seen usually a one-year warranty parts and labor. This is one of the first times I've seen that split. So I think you just want to be very careful about that uh, when you're purchasing it because if after the 90 days you don't have some other secondary warranty protection, uh, the labor might actually cost more than the computer itself given its overall price point. But uh, that said, I think this is a very capable, uh, inexpensive tablet, a uh, great looking screen, uh, very good performance, and just a few little uh, gotchas here or there, but really nothing all that uh, deal breaking beyond just that warning on the warranty. This is Lon Seipin. Thanks for watching.